How's everybody doing? Good. How are some of you doing who aren't doing so well? Let's be honest. <laughs> what? Be honest. Anybody here doing bad? <laughs> like a bunch of liars. Like a bunch of liars. Shouldn't church be a place we can be honest? Amen. It seems like it'd be funny if we weren't. <laughs> you know, it's not that I don't think we're even dishonest. I think it's just that um, we're uncomfortable saying we're terrible and someone looks like they're trying to get past you to go to the next guy. You know, you hang them up. You know? um, Good. Go ahead. <laughs> but anyways, we're uh, my wife and I were talking this morning about um, honesty and oh, what was the two things that we came up with? Familiarity. Familiarity versus routine. Yeah, routine. And um, I was caught in a loop in thinking this morning. Um, well, for instance, we have to take off right after worship, and I, I hate that. I love hanging out with you guys and. I don't hate the reason why I do it, but I, you know, it's kind of, I wish I could be in two places at once. So we can take off and go be with our kids so we can go to church with them. And I love that reason. But I um, hate missing the fellowship with you. I hate missing the message today. And um, I guess that makes me such a hater, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Haters got to hate us with their daughters. <laughs> Anyways, um, and I thought, boy, it's, it's me longing for routine versus longing for familiarity and familiarity with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit has been moving uh, us in our lives in unfamiliar ways, and um, or out of routine. That'd be the good way I was thinking earlier. And um, it's so much more important to stay where the Holy Spirit is at than it is to stay in a routine. And I just wondered why that is. And I think there's a predictability to routine that we often substitute in place of relationship, and how we would never tolerate that in a relationship. Like we would never tolerate being treated the same all the time by our husband or wife. Or by a friend, if they just expect us to be on autopilot and just hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's, no, you you know that's not good enough in a deeper relationship. You want to know? No, no. How are you really doing? And um, God is not a God of routine, even though He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same, and His character never changes. But He's always on the move. And to stay close to Him, to stay um, plugged into the Holy Spirit. To stay familiar with that feeling is so much more important than the routine. And um, it just struck me because as I was yearning for routine, I realized that would put me out of relationship. And, and there would be unbalance in my life. You know, I'd either break off this wonderful fellowship or I'd have to put myself and my kids into counseling. <laughs> trying to recover that relationship. So anyways, uh, would you all stand with me? We're going to uh, jump into worship just like we were doing. And um, pray and meditate on being out of routine and in, in familiar relationships. <laughs>
glory. Amen. <laughs>
place where we really trust that right now, God. It is truth. Your word is truth. And our hope is in you. You're the only thing that never changes. You're the only thing that is stable. You're the only thing that is a rock for us, that is strength for us. Why we run from you and do our own thing is amazing to you and me. <laughs> Why I do that sometimes. God, when I get back to you and just sit with you, there's such power, there's such peace, there's such joy, there's such refreshing. We know we need you, God. Our soul just cries out for you. We crave you, and we think we're craving drugs, or we think we're craving food, or we think we're craving alcohol, or relationships, because we have this hole there that we need to fill. And what it is, God, is that we're craving you. We're just craving you, the simplest thing to get, the simplest thing to achieve, the simplest thing to fill us up because you're right there all the time. Lord, I ask you right now as we're standing here, all of us worshiping you, Lord, give our emptiness up to you and just say, fill us, please, God. Fill us and show us that you are all we need. You're everything that we need. Help us this morning just to rest and relax in you, God. To let you be our hope, to let you be our strength, to let you be everything that we need. The very foundation and structure of who we are starts with you. We only get ourselves in trouble when we don't let that be. We don't let that be true. Your word is truth. You are love. <laughs> and you don't have it out for us. Not at all. You're here to love us and to bring us to a union with you that is more beautiful than what we can ask. Lord, we just declare our hope is in you, God. My hope is in you, God. I trust the God who never changes. I trust you, God. We just say that. Just say that. Speak that to God. My hope is in you alone. Just say it out loud. My hope is in you alone. My hope is in you alone. are a huge God, so much bigger than we know and acknowledge. But right now, right here, God, we're acknowledging you. We're saying our hope is in you, God. Let's just sing this chorus one more time. Actually, let's go to the bridge. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. You're my refuge.
really ministering to my heart as we were worshiping. And it seemed like he was just telling me, this is like a sweet incense. When his people worships him, it's, it's like it smells good. And I know that's probably a poor description to say. But immediately I thought, it's like smelling home cooking. You know, it's like familiar and good. And it smells like love. You know, and it has nothing to do with food or cooking at all. Don't everybody get hungry now. But God was like saying, this is right. It's like it smells good. This is like an incense to him. When his people worships, it's good to him. It, I think if you let it into your mind a moment, it, that it's possible to bless God. It's possible to like minister to somebody who has and knows everything needs nothing that could make rocks cry out to him if he wanted rocks to worship him but he doesn't want rocks and I don't want to coerce you either and to it reminds me of my favorite teaching I've received on worship and it was just showing the examples in the Bible of responses to Jesus after a healing after a ministry they turned to him and Jesus would say things like tell no one and they would tell everyone <laughs> You know, there's no zero obedience. You've been healed from leprosy, or now you can walk and you couldn't. And the code word is just don't tell anybody. And what do you do? You tell everybody. And what a beautiful response. So I I am not here to coerce anyone, not even myself, forced worship. That's not what he's after. But to reflect on how good he is to us and to let that response just come freely is an incense to him. That just smells right, you know? So, it's been in our um, intention as a worship team when we pray every week, when we get together and discuss and rehearse to bring everybody together in a deeper way in worship, not just be your band, which I know a lot of you definitely enter into worship. We sense it and feel it. But it's not our intention ever to be our band to be the band each one of you is capable and allowed I want to make it clear to cry out to God real um, authentic praise and there's space for it we want to create space and create a familiarity not craziness you know but as the spirit leads just authentic worship it's allowed and I want you guys to know it's, it's welcome and there's space for it so let's keep worshiping.
heart this morning. second best we're so far from where you're at when we're away from you God and you're, she's right we just let go, guilt hold us back we think well, we need to get better first and nothing can be further from the truth and that's what the prodigal son figured out just, I'm just going to go home I'm just going to go home I don't care if dad even just feeds me scraps and be a servant at his table is better than staying where I'm at and that's what it takes is just turning and going back Thank you, Lord Jesus, for telling that, that parable yourself, personally. It would, it would have meant just, I'm sure as much, coming from Paul or one of the other apostles or writers in the Bible, God, but to come from the Son of God, the one who's about to hang on the cross and take our sins upon Him, He wanted us to know that all it takes is just coming home. Just turn and come back. And the story doesn't end with eating scraps. father runs out and puts a robe on his shoulders and a ring on his finger to show this is my son. And he has a feast and a celebration because his son had returned. And to thank that is you, Lord Jesus, telling us the story about how your father feels when we turn and come back to you. Why do we hesitate? Why do we even think we need to get cleaned up when we can't clean ourselves up? Thank you for thank you for making it so easy, Lord, to return to you. You are worthy of our praise. Not only the creator of a hundred billion stars and a hundred billion galaxies, so they estimate, but you're the author and finisher of our faith. You're the reason why we even have love. You answer the very question of how do I restore this? answer is we don't. We surrender this. Thank you so much for making it easy to come home. You are worthy of our praise. Amen. 
one more prayer. Lord, thank you so much for uh, this morning and a chance to come and do worship with our brothers and sisters together as a family. Lord, we lift up the message to you now and ask that you would just make Jeff's words be your words. Help him just now be your mouthpiece, Father. Let his word pour through. And I pray, Father, for the soil in this room, our hearts, that we would receive the word and it would stick. We would see the application and you would continue to make your word come alive. We thank you so much and we offer up our prayers now in Jesus' name. How God's kids said, Amen. Amen. Amen.